Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will discuss about Edina monitor how a process that has been waited can resume their execution. Now there are many ways that FCFS construct conditional waiting and another that is access control of a cooperating process. So we will discuss each issues according to the monitor's usage. We will discuss that how a process can be resumed within a monitor. Suppose there are a number of process that has been suspended and waiting on the condition x variable. Now when x dot signal is invoked by some of the process, then which process should be resumed its execution next? The decision can be made by a simple solution known as FCFS where first come first serving where the process that is being waited for the longest period of time will be resumed next its operation. However, such simple mechanism implementation is not done by most of the operating system. Here we use a conditional construct waiting on each process. Here we use the conditional wait construct for each of the process. We can declare this construct by the following. In this x.waitc, the weight is invoked upon the condition variable x, where c is an integer number, that is the value which is be executed and evaluated on the perfect successful operation done on the x.wait. The value of c, which is an integer number or a priority value that is associated with each process name when they enter the suspended state. Now when x dot signal is performed by some processes, then the process with the soul and signaling priority will be resumed next. Now we will see that how this conditional construct actually operates. The resource allocator monitor controls the allocation of a single resource within several cooperating and competing processes. Now when the processes are requesting for a resource to be used, they are also specifying the maximum time expected to be average use of this process. Each process when requesting for a resources, then it also specifies the maximum number of time expected to use that particular resource. Now the resource allocator monitor will choose and select the process with the smallest amount of the resource allocating period for consuming and resuming their operation next. A process that needs to access the resource must observe the following sequence we will discuss now. Here R is an instance of the resource type and the time t is the amount of time that the resource process has requested for specifies about its usage. So the smallest time is allocated by the monitor and first we have to acquire and access the permission by the r.acquire t. After that as it is access to the permission of that resources, it will access the resource and after that it will release the resource. Now unfortunately the monitor cannot guarantee that every time it will follow these observations of the sequence. So the problems can then generated by a monitor are followed. Number one, that no user or processes can access the permission to the resource before gaining that permission. Number one, that is a process must access a resource before gaining permission to access it. Number two, after gaining access to the resource that it has been permissioned, we are not releasing it. Number three, a processing is releasing a resource that it has never requested. And number four and the last one is a process is requesting for the request resources twice or thrice. Now these problems can be guaranteedly solved by the 
Now this problem can be guaranteedly solved by the resource allocator monitor if we choose to put this resource allocation algorithm using and inside this resource allocator monitor. But then only the monitor that is predefined scheduling algorithm the application programmer has to use without the one we have coded for. The same type of difficulties and time dependent error was occurred during the usage of Semaphore. Now we have to deal with the time of high end programming defined error and monitors that cannot be consulted and addressed by any more the compiler. To ensure that the resource allocator monitor observe this sequence successfully, we need to pre-plan that how the resource allocator monitor will actually allocate the resources. Now if these two conditions are be ensured, then we can guarantee that no time dependent error occurred in this resource allocation system and the deadlock free solution and the deadlock free solution is guaranteed and the deadlock free solution is guaranteed. Now we will see that how the resource monitor allocator is using this resource allocation. We are declaring a boolean variable busy to indicate that the process is busy with the resource allocation process and another condition variable x on which the process should suspend and get signaled out. Now in the aqua function, we are taking and checking that if the busy is true, that means the process is used by another process's resources and that condition variable has to wait on that processes. So we are using x dot wait for time, that the time which is allocated with the request for resources. And if it is not busy, then the process can acquire the release of the resources and get busy into it. In the release operation, we are simply releasing the operation resources by making busy equals to false that the process is no more busy and by signaling the X event on that process so that it is releasing the resource on which it was using. So at the first when the monitor is using, then all the processes are not busy. This is making in the initialization code busy equals to false. So we can say that this type of resource allocator algorithm using monitor are useful for small and static programs. But it can be more complicated when you are using this type of algorithm policy in a larger and complicated programs. There, additional mechanism should be inherited for the access control problem to get addressed to. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.